this is the inside of the Coachman VIP 460. If I firstly move to the main control panel, you'll see at the moment that the panel is displaying the time and it's just giving us a little picture of the leisure battery symbol just there. To turn the 12 volts on, just press here. And then once we've done this, you'll see that the majority of the lights have all come on. These can be all turned on and off on this button just here. And then they can all be turned on and off on their own switches. Awning light on and off just here. Water pump on and off just here. The water pump needs to be on so you can get water out of the taps and fill the boiler if it has been drained down. All other information is then given via scrolling. So we have the settings menu just there. To get into that, just press the enter button. And then within that, we can change the display so the contrast, etc. We can turn button beeps on and off. The temperature displayed either in Celsius or Fahrenheit. You can turn notifications on and off. So for example, literally if your leisure battery is low, etc., it will let you know. Same if the water pump is running, as you can see. Next we have the internal temperature. Voltage of the leisure battery, and then back to the beginning again. To alter the time, just hold the enter button in on this screen, and then as you can see, it'll begin to flash, and then just literally use your arrows to select the correct time. If I now move across to the Aldi control panel for the heating and hot water system, on and off on this button just here. And then we have this little symbol here, just letting us know that we're currently connected to mains electricity. And then we have the internal temperature of the caravan. If I now press menu, it will bring up its basic functions. So this top one here is the thermostat for the heating. So literally plus or minus to pick whatever temperature you would like it inside the caravan. It will drop all the way down to five degrees for frost protection and then go all the way up to 30 degrees. Next, with the little picture of the shower head, we have hot water. So hot water off, hot water on, and then hot water in boost mode. The boost mode was mainly designed for if there's going to be more than one of you having showers in quick succession of each other, or if you just want hot water very quickly. If you do perform the boost and the heating is running, it will turn the heating off as it needs to use that extra power. So even though now I've turned the heating on at 22 degrees and I've also put hot water on, the system hasn't actually fired up yet because we now need to give it a power source. So if we're connected to main supply, we can run it off the mains and we have the little picture of the lightning strike here. So if I now press plus, we can run it on main supply at one kilowatt, two kilowatts or three kilowatts, just dependent on the amperage of the site you're on to try and avoid tripping. If we have no main supply, we can run the system on gas by highlighting the little picture of the flame. And if you have both power sources available to you, you can run in dual fuel. Dual fuel is very handy, especially in the colder months of the year. This will help you get up to temperature really quickly and it will only consume the gas as it's required. ACC cannot be accessed, this can only be used by technicians. And if I now press the little picture of the cog, we will go into the settings menu. So you'll see there that we have a picture of a moon and a sun. So we have night mode. We can turn night mode on and off just up here. We can set the temperature that we would like the heating to be for that mode. 
we can then set when we would night, like night mode to begin and whether it's for all days of the week or just individual and then when we would like night mode to end. We can also by highlighting this one here invert the backlight so the, during night mode this screen goes from the white colour to a black screen with white writing and you can also tell the boiler that you do not want any hot water for that period. This is very handy especially if you are just using gas only that way you're not wasting gas heating hot water whilst you're asleep. Next we have a little picture of the sun and this is literally just day mode so virtually the same as the night mode. Prioritizes what the system prioritizes in using when in that dual fuel mode so at the moment it favours main supply over gas. So as I said, it will get used both power sources to get you up to temperature and then it will cut the gas off and maintain on the electricity. If you were on a very low amp site, you can flip it on its head so it consumes more gas and less electric. Brightness settings just here. This one is not used on this particular model. And then we just literally have time set day of the week set which you will need to do if you are going to use day mode and night mode. If I now arrow down again the majority of these are not used on this particular model for example this one here is if you had underfloor heating. This one here is called antimicrobial if you activate this what will happen is um, you do have to be using night mode as well in conjunction with it and then in the middle of the night the boiler will turn itself on heat itself up rapidly to kill off any bacteria that may be in the system. Temperature offset for the internal thermostat for the heating so if you don't think it's quite correct you can just slightly adjust it here. High altitude mode so if you are using the caravan a thousand or more meters above sea level just activate this to make the system run efficiently. Key beeps on and off just here. And then we have one delayed start and stop to the system. So if you want to, you can literally turn it on just up here and then you can set the system to say, come on uh, Monday, nine o'clock in the morning and then continue to run until Saturday at say seven in the morning. Pump settings just here for the heating system, just literally leave it on thermal. You only want the fluid to be flowing round the radiators when it's required. Factory reset, so if there is a problem with the system, you can just reset it here. External start, you do have to have additional SIM boxes added if you wanted to control the heating and hot water system via an app. We then have language service which again is more for the workshop but you can see what everything is up to so you'll see at the moment that the ethylene glycol for the radiators is at 69 degrees and the water temperature is currently 67 degrees. Installed accessories really there's only one in here that is of any use that hasn't already been activated which is this one here. This is the load monitor so if I now go back up you'll see that we can access it and if I now go on it so if you arrive on a site and you know how many amps the site is, you can literally put it into the load monitor. So let's say it's a 10 amp site. It now doesn't matter if I ramp everything up to three kilowatts because that load monitor now takes effect and it will not allow you to pull that because if you were trying to pull three kilowatts from stone cold on a 10 amp site, you would definitely trip. And it will go right the way up to 17 amps not that you would find that on a site the most you would find is 16. If I now move to the front of the caravan and to the bench seat just here and remove the cushions you can now see the Aldi boiler just here so with the Aldi boiler to drain it's basically down for winterization or just for travel it's done on the two yellow 
drain valves just here. So before draining it down, firstly just make sure that the water pump has been turned off. And then you'll see that we have the hot feed just here. So if I now just lift that up, it will drain that section. And then I can drain the cold feed just here. Once we've done this, the boiler will then drain itself off. I always suggest that if you are fully winterizing the caravan, that you also come to all of the taps and open them all up as well, because this will help release any airlocks in the system and help it drain down far more efficiently. When it comes to refilling the boiler back up again, close all the taps, close the drain valves again, fill up the aqua roll, drop in the submersible, and then turn on the water pump. The boiler will then begin to refill from the aqua roll. Let the submersible run for a few minutes and then begin opening the taps. They'll cough and splutter as they force all the air out. Once they're then running freely on both hot and cold, reclose and then the system will fully reprime itself. If on the Aldi control panel you ever get a notification saying either red overheat or PCU overheat, you will not be able to reset it on the control panel itself. What I suggest that you do is you come to the panel just here and remove it. And then this little moldy plug here, just remove it leave it out for about three minutes and then plug it in and usually nine times out of ten the system will then fully be restored and power back up again. If you've done this two or three times and you're still getting the same message there is something more sinister going on with the boiler and it needs to be looked at by a technician. You will also find in here the boiler's main fuse as well. Also underneath here, we have the control board for the power touch motor mover. The back of the battery box just here. The majority of the gas isolation taps for the caravan as well. So we have the fridge, heating and hot water and the cooker, all in the on position. And quite frankly, they can stay like that. I always say if you do smell gas in the caravan, just go to the source and turn off the gas bottle. We have the consumer unit just here. So if I now just flap the front down, you will see that we have the main strip switches just along the top here. So we've got the individual MCBs, main RCD and test button just here. So if anything is not working on main supply, just check to see if you've blown, um, sorry, the, check to see if you've tripped. If you've got something not running on 12 volt, just check to see if you've blown a 12 volt fuse just down here. And again, they are all labeled up. On the top here is basically where the battery charger is located. So just make sure that this bit here just has some ventilation to avoid it overheating. Underneath the opposite bench seat is storage and this can also be accessed by the outside locker door just there. Tucked down here we have the PIR sensor for the alarm. Just press the button every now and then just to make sure that it is operating because it is wireless and just requires some batteries. We have a fast charge wireless plate just here for compatible mobile phones. And then we have the radio just here. So on and off on the button that says SRC. Volume control just here. Search for radio stations or change tracks if you've got a iPhone or a compatible Android device plugged in 
via the USB or the auxiliary lead just there. To alter anything, just press the volume button in and then you get into the radio's menu so you can change the audio, the illumination, go into its system menu. I always suggest that you go into the system and that you put power save on because that way when you go to turn the radio off it will then turn itself completely off and you'll, basically the display then won't continue to run. The aerial for the radio and for the television is just located in the overhead locker just here. So with the aerial itself just undo the collar to lower and raise it. This green window here represents the back of the aerial so you know which way it's facing and H stands for horizontal. By turning this tail here you can flip the aerial into a vertical position if you need more additional tuning. Always make sure that the aerial is back down and secured for travel. Try to avoid over tightening this collar here because you do run this, the risk of splitting the plastic. The digital amplifier for the TV and radio is just here. On and off, do make sure it's on before trying to tune in a TV and then control the boost just here. If you are going to be using the external TV socket, and it does explain about it just on the sticker just there, you just need to remove, as it shows on here, literally just, if connecting an external aerial, connect the loose black coax cable to the input on the TV signal amplifier. So literally you're just taking out this one here and then plugging in this one here. This switch here just controls the courtesy light on this side of the caravan. Microwave just here, so this will work when the caravan is connected to main supply. It's plugged in just here. Always advisable to remove any contents for travel. We then have the power setting just here. Very handy if you're on a low amp site to lower the power. We then have stop clear, as it shows on there, wait time defrost select. Clock timer, quick start, stop, and then you can select on here as well. Dometic fridge just here. So to operate this, firstly turn it on just by pressing and holding the button in. This is an automatic model, so as long as you are in auto, it will find the best power source it can for you. So because we're currently hooked up to main supply, it's put us onto mains with a little picture of the two pin plug. If I was to now run outside and pull the mains lead out, it would then automatically attempt to fire itself up onto gas. And as soon as we hitch ourselves up and connect uh, the electrics to a tow vehicle and start the engine, it will then automatically go over to 12 volt maintain to keep the fridge cold whilst on the move. To alter anything, just come to the dial just here and just press it in. And then as you can see, as I twist, I can then move. So this top one here is just to alter the temperature. Next, we can take it out of auto if we want to. So as you can see, we've got auto there. We've got 12 volt maintain, gas, and main supply. And then come back out again. If there's a problem in any shape or form, so if I select 12 volt maintain for the moment, you'll now see we get this red bar. It's all flashing and we've got an error code just there because we're currently not connected up to a tow vehicle with the engine running.
down here we just have the brightness of the screen whether or not you want warning noises on or off or etc and then we just have the additional circulation fan for it handy in the warmer months of the year to avoid any condensation building up at the back of the unit to turn the unit back off again just literally hold the button in removable freezer compartment at the top here and the beauty of this particular unit is that the fridge door can be opened on either side two main sockets just here USB charging and then we have literally 12 volt plug in point if you're going to be running a 12 volt TV and then we have the aerial fly lead point just there and satellite connection as well across the other side we then have the hob so we've got the electric hot plate just here which again like the microwave will work when the caravan is connected to main supply and it just operates here with the gas burners it's just a matter of pushing in twisting and pushing the igniter Beneath that we have the grill and then we have the oven. There is also a light for the oven as well. Directly beneath the oven we have the usual pots and pan storage but you'll also find a plug plugged in which is for the electric hot plate. Above my head just here is the Omnivent fan. So to operate this, firstly wind the roof vent open. And then we have middle button to turn the unit on. And then we have arrows out for extraction and arrows in for cooling. And it's variable fan speed just by pressing. Do make sure that all roof vents are closed for travel. Through to the rear of the caravan we have the washroom. So in the wardrobe just here we ha also have the freestanding table. We then have the nice spacious shower the basin heated towel rail and then the Fetford toilet just here 
so the bowl does swivel to open to the cassette just slide the grey lever across and then it's the blue button to flush level indicator just here to let you know when the cassette needs emptying and then always make sure that you close to the cassette again just on the lever if this has been left open and you try to remove the cassette from the outside it will not come out so if you do feel resistance just make sure that nobody's left it open in the wardrobe just here we have the header tank for the Aldi heating system. Just make sure that the fluid level is between the minimum and the maximum. Always take your reading once the heating is up to temperature as the fluid will expand in the tank. If you do need to just top it up just a small amount, it can be done. You can see the cap just there. Just make sure that you are using the pink Aldi solution and not the blue one and as it shows the fluid does not need to be changed for five years with the beds in this particular model you can either have two good size singles or you can have a double and with the double it's nice and easy just a matter of pulling the slats across and then just dropping in the back rest cushions some people will flip the cushions over because it makes them less bumpy but it is just down to personal preference 